What started out fun but eventually left you feeling sad? Hanging out with my sisters in law, the three of us have kids in the same age range, and for a while we were getting together every week or so, to take the kids to the park, zoo, or each other's houses. At some point I realized that I was always the one inviting them along, but that they regularly got together without inviting my kids or me. I backed off and stopped initiating get togethers to see if they'd pick up the slack, and they never did. I can't remember the last time we got together. I should probably get back in the habit of trying to get together with them for the sake of my kids seeing their cousins, but it still feels crappy to be the third wheel. I had same thing happen with my friends. Haven't seen any of them in 5 year. This is easy. Working in a big office downtown. My second job right out of college was working for MCI Worldcom in downtown Seattle in the Columbia Tower. I had to go buy another suit, full suit required every day, get my first cell phone Nokia something something complete with snake, and I even had a parking space downtown that the company mostly paid for. The first few weeks were amazing, I got to sit in rush hour traffic going there and back. No joke, this was fun at first, because crap. I was on my way to the Columbia Tower and I bloody worked there, and there was something extraordinary about driving into the city in the morning. Like I'd arrived in all those years of working graveyard shift to put myself through school the school I felt like such a baller. I freaking looked dapper as crap in my business suit. Met friends at swanky downtown pubs for drinks after work. Got phone calls on my cellular phone. I was hot stuff in my cubicle. Except that everything that happened between the hours of 9am and 5pm was pure heck. Sucking the life force right out of my soul. The honeymoon period. Albeit brief was amazing and though it's been over 15 years since those days I am getting nostalgic just thinking about having lunch with my other business colleagues in the atrium. But it only took a few weeks before I saw the light, and while it was a bumpy ride between discovering that I didn't want to be a businessman after all, or that perhaps I did but only on my own terms, and finding what I did want to be, getting out of that world sooner rather than later is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Serious answer, having fun. I don't know how it is for other people with depression, but for me I almost feel guilty for having fun. Like I don't deserve to have fun. I was getting so sad that I was having a good time. This has resulted in me crying in a corner in Disney World on multiple occasions. I don't know why. I've gone out to large gatherings, had fun, met people, laughed and genuinely had fun, and then I get home and I just feel, empty, like unnaturally hollow. It's a terrible feeling and it detracts from the fun I had earlier on. For me, free diving. I started because I really liked snorkeling and being underwater. I loved getting close to nature below the surface, and I actually felt graceful for once. I'm an anxious person by nature but with this sport, for the first time, I found peace and was able to use mind over matter to make myself calm. It was a unique and rewarding experience. I then started doing competitive freediving for a lark and found I really enjoyed it. Something strange for me since I'd never been good at sports. I really got into it and even ended up on the national team competing at the world championships. Then I hit a roadblock. Every time I went past a certain depth, I would get what's called a squeeze and then cough up blood after a dive. I tried many different techniques and started back at shallower depths in training but every competition I couldn't get as deep as the previous one. I kept telling myself that I should go to competitions just for fun, to be with my friends, supporting them, and work on technique instead of depth, or work on other aspects of the sport. But I was fooling myself. I couldn't stop myself wanting just one more meter of depth. I just ended up disappointed, even when my dives were good simply because they weren't as deep as I wanted. After a friend passed away from this condition a couple of years back, I gradually withdrew from the sport. At this point I've basically quit. I loved it so much but it turned into something that didn't mean what it should for me. I can't trust myself to return to the sport until I know that I can do it for the right reason. For my original reasons. I miss my friends. I miss the water. But I want to keep my lungs. I want to stay alive and to know that I have a chance to someday go back to depth and be safe and happy again. But I want to keep my lungs. Good idea. Tonka Town. In the summers when I was a child, 
the neighborhood kids and I used to build a toy town out of scrap lumber in the backyard of a friend's house down the street. It was an extra half lot on the edge of the woods, and we would bulldoze streets with our Tonka, and Structo and Nilant and Buddy L, bulldozers and road graders and dump trucks. We had collected thrown away bath tiles, 1 inches x 1, from the surrounding home construction sites over the years, which we used for money. We each built houses, stores, offices, schools, gas stations, etc. And then proceeded to live out our childhood ideas of small town life with our toy cars and trucks throughout the rest of the summer. We basically did this every year, until the year we turned 12 or so. And although we went to the trouble of setting up the town again, it just didn't seem to be that much fun anymore. And we didn't play there again after that. I remember being sad that I couldn't feel the fun of it anymore. We were just starting to grow up and find other interests, I guess. I still have some of my old Tonka trucks, though. Unemployment. The FRST 2 weeks were enjoyable, watching series all day in an empty house with my cat Plossoby. However it's been 13 months and it is so depressing. I got unemployment insurance money for like 10 months. I used that time and money to hitchhike across Canada. It was the best summer of my life. Trying to have a baby. First year was fun. Extra sexy times, etc. Second year, okay this is fine, now it's just work. My last relationship, I started with a best friend and partner and ended with what feels like a significantly weakened friendship and a lingering crappy feeling. I'd totally do it again though. I started with a best friend, partner, co-worker, and bandmate, ended with nothing. Becoming a solo musician has been interesting, though. Encouraging friends to do cool things I can't participate in. I get so excited for them, but then can't contain my own jealousy. Strippers. Starts as a fun guys night out but then you realize how mentally broken the entertainment is and you can't help but feel bad for enabling misery. Feel bad for enabling misery. This is probably what they think of you, too. I was having shower sex with my girlfriend and her foot slipped and she ended up slipping, hitting her head on the wall. I felt terrible for her but was also in pain myself since it felt like she broke my penis. Luckily we were both fine, but it's one of the reasons why I hate shower sex. H. Much like Master Bashan, they leave you feeling empty afterward, and not in the good way. It's fun to pick one out, arrange a meeting. Enjoy it and leave, but it's always crappy to realize you spent cash on a fleeting feeling. Would you buy tickets to an amusement park just to ride one ride once? That's what a H is. If all you're looking for is a lay, then it's pretty great. Amongst the best lays I've had were H. If you're looking for more, then it can leave you with a bad feeling. Amongst the worst lays I've had were H. P. The maturity pictures that my mother had done last week. This is my mom's first grandchild so it was very important that we took family photos maternity pictures. My brother and boyfriend didn't even want to be there but I thought that we had a lot of fun. I got to see them today and while the work is very nice we all look awkward as frick. I personally look like a frog mixed with a loaf of bread. It's disgusting. I'm planning on hanging these pictures on the wall and letting myself be my own thin inspiration. Because I'm just this doughy creature with like 3 chins. I am a little bit pee that no one told me that I look as gross as I do. What people do tell me is that I don't look 9 months pregnant and that I'm not that big, so basically I have always looked like the dang Michelin man. So basically it makes me sad that I felt so pretty when these pictures were being done only to look like an overweight toad. It's embarrassing to think that I could look good. On one hand I just want to own it, on the other hand I just want to hide. Film festivals. A man can only sit on his butt mainlining buttered popcorn and soda in a darkened theater for so long until the urge to move finally overtakes him. Thank you. I've been red for hours. Time to shut this bastard PC down. Good night. I got wasted for the first time yesterday. Sadly not enough to forget what happened. But I got really fricked up. Thought, why not? This is what people do for fun. Everybody does it. Get all fricked up on alcohol and have fun. F*** 
finally forget all of this anxiety and stress. Well, getting drunk made me feel completely out of control. I hate being out of control. It's stressful. This feeling really made it heavily obvious how absolutely out of control my life is. Literally nothing is working out. Piece by piece my life seems to be falling and shattering like glass. And typically, you can't put glass back together. You sweep it up and throw it in the trash. It's the only option. There, had that on my chest for a while. Now it's in the internet. My last relationship started with a best friend and somebody I loved and trusted more than anything. The ending left me with medication, sleeping issues and am currently struggling to put on weight and be physically healthy due to eating problems because I couldn't cope with the breakup and couldn't eat properly. I still miss him a lot. The thought of him makes me incredibly sad. I heard he's happy now though, so that's good for him I guess. Soccer. I was so good about a year ago. I represented my state, played in the high amateur tournaments in the US, played in Europe a few times, in my senior year, now, I have a few division 1 college teams offering positions but I lost the love of playing, I don't know what happened, but I feel it's time to hang up the boots, even though it feels sad that all the practicing and pushing because I wanted to get to the next level is wasted, I feel happy that I can enjoy time for me and kick around for fun instead of high pressure matches. Masturbating. When you're a young teen learning how awesome it feels, there's no repercussions. So, literally it's just pure fun for you. Fast forward 10 years to when you're engaged, about to marry the woman of your dreams, addicted to pee and still masturbating. Not so fun anymore. Thankfully she supports me 100% and I'm 8 days clean. Counting somehow. Shout out to Unoffered for the support and tools as well. Quitter. League of Legends. I got addicted, and worst of all addicted to just mindlessly playing. I don't take note of what I do and don't do right like I used to do in CS and this has resulted in me leaving school and cutting off almost all connection with friends for a game in which I am utterly terrible. Don't actually enjoy and constantly has me being reminded by others playing how worthless I am. Actually writing this out started as a joke but it's honestly so close to the truth that now I feel sad. I'm uninstalling right now. The thought of my boyfriend and I moving in together and starting our lives together was fun and exciting. We did it then he realized he wasn't ready so he moved out. Yeah, that sucks. And yeah, I'm sad. Minecraft. It was so fun starting out, learning how to play, thinking of things to build. But once you know everything and have done everything, it makes playing the game feel kind of empty. Life. You start out, playing, learning, having fun with the most simple things. As you grow older, you want to get older, so you can do certain things having more money so you can buy certain things. But after a while, nothing does it for me. I'm not rich, just a middle class working guy. But, if I save a few years for a new car bike computer whatever, I don't even get any joy of the purchase using said product. And it's not that I feel depressed really, but I just can't get any joy it seems. Remember playing with Lego for hours a day, playing games for hours a day, playing outside till it got dark. Always so much fun. The relationship I just ended with a man I thought was really awesome. He is the saddest, most childish, impulsive, negative thinking person I know. I do not enjoy his company at all, and I'm moving out in a couple of weeks. Yes, he knows, it sucks. Being a charmingly awkward kid, eventually you reach full adulthood and you turn into a creep. I can't be as delightfully awkward or weird now without anyone thinking something must be wrong with me. An honestly serious answer, the 2016 election cycle. Every time I read one of these articles or speeches, I just feel a sense of dread. Playing Red Orchestra 2 without music, it turns into a mess of the in-game troops screaming and crying for help so they don't die, because like we often forget, war isn't fun. Hookups in college. I worked hard in high school and put my social life on the back burner so that I could get into my dream school, and started partying hard at said dream school. It was the first time I had gotten much attention from guys, and it got to my head. It got to the point where I was hooking up with 2-5 guys every weekend, not necessarily sex, but still. And while it was fleetingly fun, 
the reality was that I was at a point of asking myself what's wrong with me, am I not good enough if I didn't hook up with at least one guy on a night out. I was using the alcohol and the hookups it to numb the pain of being rejected by someone I had feelings for and the fact that my depression was resurfacing. But once I realized this, thank god, I got much more in control of myself and now have so, so much more fun with just a few drinks and hanging out with friends all night rather than thinking about who I can hook up with that night. Going to open houses of homes I had no financial ability to purchase. I went to them to, one, learn a thing or two from real estate developers because I am thinking of building a few condos on my plot and, two, just seeing extravagant houses. Now I'm just bummed that I can't afford a 2.5 million dollars home. Literally this city I about had desert a fight. I win fight for my dead nephew. I just want to say I love him like cousin. Comma Jesus dude. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.